G'day, how you going? Ian Aplis here, acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I like to teach beginners and advanced beginners how to paint in acrylic. I'll get the canvas size up there for you and I'll also get some colours running up the screen that I choose to use in this video today. Uh, this picture was given to me by Jan Davis in North Carolina and she took this photo from her front deck in the evening time. So I will show you the picture and we'll get right into it. So here's the picture that Jan posted in my art group, Ianapolis Art Network, and I love the sky. It's got a nice bright area in the middle, attracting your eye to the middle of the painting. You've got this distant mountain, Mount Cleo in the background. We've got this dead stick wood colour framing the beautiful sky. It's up to you how you create a sky in a painting like this. And then we've just got a simple foreground and these beautiful bright coloured Japanese magnolias in the front here. So I'm using that photo as a reference. So I have the foreground arching right up. It's going to come right in front of everything that I put before it. We've got the Mount Cleo in the background there. So I'll get the distinct shapes of Mount Cleo so people that are familiar with that area can recognise it. And we'll obviously have the mid-ground dead wood stick trees surrounding this part here. So I am using the photo as a reference only. So now I want to get my sky in first. So down here on my glass palette, I've got some soft titanium white. I just call it craft white, but it's a very soft bodied craft white paint. It's in the big gallon bottles. And I'm going to add some retarder to that. This retarder for you new viewers simply will slow down the drying time of this acrylic paint because acrylic paints, depending on your climate, can dry very quick. So I want to get the sky mapped in with this, let's call it a primer. Get it down there, right down the halfway. I've just put me mountain there as a reference, but I don't need to see it, I'll paint that in. So there's halfway, all the way across, because I might need sky colours down here, okay? Push it into the two for your canvas. Now I do recommend, for those who want good art, practice everything you're practicing and learning on cardboard and cheap papers and stuff, and then do your paintings on a good quality canvas and you'll see the difference in your work. Now I'm going to stroke that left and right like a pure gentleman, getting it nice, evenly and thin so I can put my sky colours on. Now down here again, I've got the sky colours I'm going to use and there's obviously a sun setting in the evening. I've got Indian yellow, permanent alindrin and my cerulean blue, the blue I choose to use. So I'm going to start with the Indian yellow and get that on the horizon line. So I want this right across the horizon, just get it right across there. Now watch what I do here. I don't want it too high up into the sky, not too high up. I'll feather it with the tip of the brush, just getting that edge right there. See how it's loose and feathered? Now watch, I'll put one layer of Indian yellow on there. Watch what I do again. Picking up some more Indian yellow on just one side of the brush, okay? I've got it heavily condensed on this side of the brush here. Just so as we haven't got boring yellow, I know that mountain's going to be there, so I might want to put some bands of Indian yellow just on top of this Indian yellow, okay? There we go, look at that. I've stamped it on, I've controlled where I want it. And then I can lightly pull that through. It's sort of gotten darker now, look at that. Work out how much you want to, don't wash it away into nothing again. I don't know if the, yeah, the camera's picking up. We've got some different values of yellow there. I've just cleaned me putter on a brush. I want to pick up some of the permanent alindrin now and get some of this at the top of the yellow, Indian yellow. And we'll come across, I'm going to come across, I don't want it like bands, stripes. Nature's got all different weird and wonderful movements within it. So I want to bring this colour down like this. Boom. See how easy that was? Boom. Now, before I wash too much of it away into the canvas, I want to control what I get into the yellow. How am I going to do that? Well, what I'm going to do is just simply splice it like this. Look at that. I'm making my own sunset. It's not the exact same as in the photo, but this photo is a reference only. There we go. I've got that done. Wipe it off up here. Now I want to control this up into the white. So I'm going to blend that some of that down there, wipe it off again. It's important to know when to wipe business off your brush. See, I've just done it a bit more there. I'm controlling that up into there for the blue colours. Now, I want to use the tip of me putter on a brush and get this looking, oh yeah, like that. Look at that, beautiful. 
easily controlled, easily done. When you know what to do, you can do it. Okay, back in here, we're gonna go and pick up the cerulean blue for the sky. And we'll start at the top. Okay, so I wanna get it right at the top. I wanna to get the blue. I've got the blue, just blue. It's not mixing with nothing. Now I'm gonna slowly bring it down. It's coming lighter. I'm starting to meet the permanent alinsarin color. And now I will bleed those two colors together. Stroke it with the tip of the brush. Control where you want things coming down. You can sliver that into the red if you want like that. Back to the tip of the brush and you're stroking it and getting the values and the brush marks in and out of the sky like so. There we go. I'm just gonna grab a brush, any brush. I've just picked up a medium bristled fan brush to get some of that craft white on its own without the retarder in it because I want a bit more of a glare in the middle of that sun area where we might have lost it. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stamp this on like so, and it's gonna start picking up. I want a main glare here. Coming across, feather it out. I'm controlling where I want this glare, you see. I'm just using this fan brush. We'll get some of it up there. Some bits of it breaking up there because you need this bright spot right in the middle. Maybe you can have a bit out there. This is not clouds, this is just my glare. Down to the bottom. I haven't brushed it in because I'll be grinding the living buggery out of it and turning it into snot. And that's one thing you don't want to do. You get so far done in a painting and then you start snotulating it. It's not a good feeling. So I've controlled where I want that glare. Now all I'm gonna do is pick up my putter on a brush again. And I want to easily pull those ones in there like that. And just, that's it. Look at that. Done. I've got me glare in there. Now we'll put some clouds on. The way I do my clouds, you need these three things. Your blending brush to blend them, a brush to stamp them on. I use a, a fan brush mainly, but you can use anything really. You can even use your fingers titanium white and a kitchen towel to wipe the build up off your blending brush as you keep blending along. So I'm going to simply pick up the titanium white into me. Now this is out of the tube, it's a lot thicker, it's got a little bit more pigment in it than that soft crafter paint. Either look at the reference or do me own and get some clouds going. So I might want some stuff here. I've got a bit of an idea off the reference and I'll use a bit of my own here, getting something coming up here so it's pulling in the sun setting colors there as well something like that uh, there we go now I'm gonna grab my blending brush and my towel I want let's say the bottom harder and the top so I'm, I'm stamping on I'm working out what I've got here I've got plenty of time I can feel how wet the paint is I'm wiping the build up off my brush I'm creating the bottom of the clouds first, the way I want them to be. They're looking good. I always like to give them a bit of a drag. There we go. Now that's a bit harsh right there. Don't like that. So I'm just going to disturb that a bit more. Over there. It's all a matter of playing with your work. Now I want to get some of this dancing into the blues there. Pull it up, make turmoil. That bit there I'll drag right off like that we've got bits of cloud happening I'll get some of this up into the blue there now this isn't a big fluffy white clouded sky so we'll be aware of that getting something up there so we'll put something here coming right into there like that. Very simple. Blend the way you want your cloud to look. There. Keep these drag marks very straight if you're gonna do that. And I just want something maybe soft, cirrus type of cloud high up in the sky. Just some gap filling clouds. So they're just simply like this. Like that. That V fan look like that is sort of giving the vibe that they're coming over your head. Like this, see? 
that sort of pattern. And we're just going to soften the edges down with those, leaving the vibrancy there. I've got a bit of red in the paint there, it doesn't matter because the sun's shining up into there. And I'm just kind of stroking that, blending it. Not too much, don't over blend. You can over blend stuff, you're creating wonderful stuff and by the time you're finished, all that wonderful stuff has picked up its bat and ball and gone home and you've got nothing left on your canvas that looks wonderful. So you've got to stop, analyse, touch, tweak, blend and leave the great stuff there. There we go. That's not over blending. That'll do for the sky. Now the painting's dry so I can put in this mountain. So I've got a bit of water, I'm just using a flat brush, something I can get a decent edge on. And I want to start bringing a little bit of this into me cerulean blue to grab the mountain colour. So I'll just keep adding some of that. Careful when you're adding reds because they can, depending on the pigment, they can be very powerful. Looking for that distant faded mountain colour, which is your red and your blues. I want to, let's see what happens if I put a bit of white in that. Yeah, I did it over here and I don't want to spoil my paint there. So I will grab a bit of that craft white now just to get it a bit dull. Don't want it too heavy and dark. It's in the distance. It's got between your eyesight and it, you've got a lot of atmosphere between you and it. Now I would like to at least get the mountain very similar to the shape what's in there. So as we, I want it about that high. There's a bit of a dip there coming up. Coming down, coming straight, and rounding off here somewhere like that. Now see how that paint broke up on my canvas? I've added a little bit more water into that just to make it a bit more inky. And what that does, it allows your paint, watch this now, it's, it's more solid. Look at that. Now I'll tweak this mountain until I'm happy with the finished layout of it so it's looking reasonably similar to Mount Silo. Now I'm just going to bring this right down, bring it right off the down here, down here. So I'll pick up a bit of white, I'll just show you what I mean. Just that craft white, I'm massaging it into that colour and then I'll slowly wipe the build up off the brush and then just pull it up. Now there's a difference between acrylic and oil paints and the way they work. You might watch somebody that paints a mountain in oil and they're using a knife, okay? Now everyone paints different, everyone has different habits, but in my opinion, if you're gonna do oil paintings, you're gonna have trouble trying to do it the same way they use a knife. I rather brush my mountains on and brush my detail into them in acrylic because they dry a lot quicker. They don't behave like oils do. Now, I'm gonna get this color and make it a bit darker just to put another one just in front like it is in the picture. So to make it dark, I'm just grabbing a bit more red into it, a bit more blue. I won't put the white into it. That's dry. Need it dry so this won't mud up. And this is pretty much gonna come right in front of that. Watch that bit there. So in the reference, that bit you can see coming down. And this is pretty much on the horizon somewhere, scooting along like this. And it's always handy to have your hills. Don't bring them off a painting down like that. If you look at that, that looks a bit wrong. Always, even if it's in the picture coming down like that, you just bring it off on an upward moment on an upward movement. And this is such simple detail layering you can do, seeing what's in a reference picture. So there we go, we're just getting this other mountain in. This is gonna be covered up with a lot of trees in front of it, but it's there, okay? Everything's dry, now we're gonna do the bottom half. I've got my deer foot. I'll show you what I'm gonna use that for in a moment, so stick around and I'm gonna base in the bottom colour. I've got some water there, you probably can't see it. And this is just black gesso. Black gesso is like chalkboard paint, it's flat black. Anything dark, not glossy. So I wanna get this all painted at the bottom half. 
I'm using my putter on a brush because it's a lot quicker than mucking around with that fiddly little deer foot. It'll take me a month of Sundays. Pick up the deer foot now, so I'll just dampen it a bit. Don't want it sogging wet though, otherwise just... Now I'm using this to get the real sticky, scrabbly bits out into the sky area. So now I'm gonna use this to come in front. See how it's still solid? I'm gonna start here, and where it's starting to come over the colored paint now, which is pretty much, I'm looking at the reference, this is all gonna come around. You want it, get it to the colored paint, and then start coming a bit sticky and a lot open. See like that, look at that. I can control it with this deer foot. If you don't have a deer foot, something that's gonna put a lot of little dots and bits and bobs on your painting like that. Where I want it nice and woody and sticky and open. And this is pretty much coming all the way along the front of the painting. There's some high bits right here, so find out in the reference here, there's some tinkering right over that sunset color, looks great. See, you can see behind all here now. You've controlled your detail. So easy to do when you know what you're doing or when you know how to do it. Practice is the key to a lot of things. So there's a couple of trees there. And we're gonna simply do this all the way along. Leaving some of that low mountain there, a bit of a high tree there. Open him up a bit. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, this is dry. I've got some burnt umber and see the, the bits in the sunshine area? You don't wanna leave them black. They're gonna be a lot lighter because the sun's shining on them. So I've got some burnt umber down here. And the very tips, see I started off here, we just wanna get these covered over the sky area, like so. Just bring it down past it, here we go. Nice and open. Bring some of this down as well. We've got other trees here. They're just sort of coming down to nothing. So what I'm doing is pretty much bring them down to nothing. You'll see why in a minute. Maybe another one there. Bits and bobs, because you're going to have some more. This is all in the background distant. We're going to have some other stuff in front of this. But just having that Indian yellow mixed with the burnt umber is making these dark trees visible to the person looking at your painting. Now we're simply going to put what's in front of those trees in before we bring the next step forward. So I've got some, now I will put a little bit of the cad yellow in that just to turn the lights on, but this is going to be a, a darker green. And I've got some sap green there. I'll just gingerly highlight some of this green with. So I don't want that foamy, frothy stamping sound. I want that spongy stamping sound. And just here and there, I want to grab some of this green it's kind of dark but just sort of sit in front of those brown ones just here and there so i want a big blob about there something about there see how that yellow's just made that forest green stand out on there you don't want it too loud though probably a little bit just find your spots and where my ground's going to cut in front i want to have it dark down there if i've lost too many of the darks i'll simply put them back So I'm just sort of gap filling all the detail in the background. It's pretty simple, really. Now I'm simply going to grab some of this sap green and I just want little bits. Dab with this. Little bits, just very little bits over the top of that. Is that showing a difference? What I might do is just hit it with a little bit of yellow. I've just hit it with a little bit of yellow. You'll see the difference now. There we go a little bit a little does a lot just remember that a little does a lot and I'm just trying to find those mainly in this pocket here the rest can stay dark that'll do now we've gone back down to the burn number so I'm going to pull that into me stampy deer foot brush the one that gives me open dots everywhere like here 
and we're simply going to frame the painting. Now if this is too bright you can always add some a little bit of black with it. But in the photo there's a distinct tree coming up here pretty much so I'm going to start at the top of it finding the tree there we go I'm making the shape of the tree with these stampy bits. Try not to get stampy blobs like that on there that's off the canvas by the way it's not on it and I'm looking at the reference nice bit of a gap there the trunks are what going to going to fill it in and this is coming down in front of that stuff there to about there now it might not look like it yet until we put the trunks in another one on the other side coming it's real close so it's bits there I'm, what I'm doing is I'm putting the group of fine twigs there and I'll join it together with the actual twigs themselves, the bigger branches. So you'll get a gist of what I'm doing. Now simply put that down and you want to grab your brush that you can do your long twigs, sticks and branches with. I'm just simply going to use a script liner here. Now this tree is kind of, I'll get one up here. So you twist and come in an upward motion this is the way these branches are on this tree, I can see from the reference picture, obviously. And they're all kind of, hang on, let's get that a bit more. Finish it, finish it into a twist. Get these where you want them. I'm twisting, it's grinding the sharp edge, keeping the sharp edge there. Yeah, that's wet enough, look at that. Now what I didn't tell you on the other tree, but I'll tell you on this one, when you put these branches over all this stuff, add a bit of, I've added a bit of black to it so they're not so weak looking. They've got grunt to them. I'm twisting this up. So add a bit more black into the burnt umber just for the twigs and branches. That way they stand out more. Not too much though. Don't go overboard bit of a trunk here that'll come up nice and tall twist it let it go wobbly and natureable fork it out like that bring it off to a tip so this is coming right out here holding all those twigs up and so on and then the, the bit in the dark down here I'll give it a go later I won't do it just now but you might want to put a little bit of brightness on it if you want just to show it stands out on there and now what we're going to do is simply get our branches in all this little twiggy stuff like there nice thin broken branches overlapping twisting around don't have them flat if you can help it get them twisting around all sorts of ways crisscrossing everything and because this paint is a little bit darker it's conducting shadows and depth within it. It's holding shadow. Now, like I said with the trunk, get a bit of your craft white something just to smear it. See there, I haven't mixed it fully. Just see if we can get some kind of artistic light shining on that into the dark area. So I'll try, oh yeah, that, that's maybe a bit too much, but I can darken that up a bit, but I just want to give you a jest. There's the trunk of there, just something right down there now with that white smeared into the burnt umber and black we're going to have a ground here so you want to try and get to hold some of this back just some trunks at the very bottom of all this busy business you got going here that's a bit bright there but you'll get a gist of what I mean not too fat Go lower than you need to so you can cut it back in with your front detail. So everything's dry. This tree here is our starting point of our front foreground hill. If anything, I've had this too low. I needed it a bit higher up. I didn't analyse the picture enough, but that's what happens when you don't. Now I'm just grabbing some forest green over that dark paint there, just to map in my front hill over so there's me hill I'm 
the hill came pretty much down like this in the photo. So I'm going to have to broaden it now. Because see all those branches? You want to cut them back. There we go. Get that there. Now I'm just going to simply leave some of that dark there, but pretty much paint most of it away. I can always put dark back. Now we just want to simply add some grass into there. For the grass, I've got yellow green. I'm just going to use this putter on a brush. You use whatever brush is good for you. Everyone has different habits, remember? Now, I haven't dried anything yet. I want to get vibes of this here and there. Now, I will come backwards and forwards, darkening it, lighting it, highlighting it, working out what's got to go where. I've just got to get some of that paint right to the tip of the corner of my brush so it's going to work. There we go. So I'm sitting that dark area down. So we're scratching this in, getting vibes and bits and bobs there. Let's try and do this, see what happens. We're getting lines in there, which is fine. There we go. And if it's too blobby here and there and what notty, simply put the darks back. But this is all I'm doing. Getting a bit of yellow into that now, just so as I can probably find somewhere more highlighty. I don't like this colour, but it's too late. Now, what I'm going to do is grab my fan brush, the medium one I used earlier on in the show. I've got some yellow ochre, yellow oxide, whatever you want to call it. And I've sort of scrambled that in with that yellow green as well, just to get that dead grass colour as well. Because this isn't this luscious. It's got some realistic dead. So I'm, I'm putting some of this in there as well. And hopefully it'll change the value so it doesn't look so cartoony and loud. I'm scratching it up. I'm just hoping for the best here. Because like I said, I'm not that great at painting grass. But I'll give anything a go. Can I have a look in there? Yeah, that's okay. It's wet, so it's, it, it's mixing a lot, mudding up a lot. So with a fan brush, you could probably stamp it on and push them up. Push, see there, and we're getting some grass there. I'm just going to do that over here. So we've got all that. We've, I think I've saved it, do you reckon? Comment below if I've saved it. If I haven't saved it, just put snot. <laughs> but anyway. So I've finished my foreground grass. I just want to show you something here because it is a tutorial. So I'm grabbing my burnt umber and black so it's quite dark. And just watch what shadows do because you can see there, I don't know if you can see, but I can see there's a lot of depth missing in here. So I'm just going to gingerly, too much on the brush, get some darker aspects flourishing through this ground need these darks here. Watch when we put the highlights back again. The highlights being the, um, there we go. See the dark? Get on there and pull it up. Sit too much of the darkness back down. Just so we got some depth within our field there. And you go backwards and forwards with your lights and darks if you feel you need one more of one or more of the other. Now I've got my smaller deer foot and I've got my quinacridone red violet. We've got the dark colour and I'm going to bring some over here just with some white so we can get our highlighted colour to get these Japanese mangolias. There's some there and we'll just looking at the reference some of it's whiter than the rest. So I don't want to start with the light colour, I've got to start with the dark colour. So these are not going to be along the front, if anything, they're that way. There's one here and one there. That's the vibe, that's the look, that's the perspective I'm looking for. So we're gonna get one about here. So I'm darkening it, leave some open windows in it. I'm just sort of looking at the tree there, getting a rough idea how hers is looking. And there's one about here somewhere. One about here, a bit more of a sticky one, I'll just make it my own. One there and one on that one. So the branches will sink into the tree and not sit on top. I've got some burnt umber tinted with some white. Now this tree is about here in the ground, so I'm going to get him up and just bring him up, twist it, stop, 
bring a branch through wherever I want the branch to be within this tree. Uh, there's probably another bit of a branch trunk here. And when we highlight it, at the moment these trunks look in front of the bush. The highlights will sink them in and just give them that three dimension look. Now this one here, I'm gonna bring him out and get him holding all that bit there up. This one's coming right off the painting there. Now I'm not sure exactly the characteristics of these trees, so I hope I'm doing it a little bit of justice at least. Holding that up there. So I've given the trunks a light dry. Now coming back down here with the same brush, I want to grab this colour and then make a value of a highlight and then I just want to go one more step brighter than this at the very end but less as well. Sit those trunks down with different layers and blobs of your hopefully Japanese Mongolia. Cover up some of the branches where you're not liking them. Because this is the two dimension and then we'll make it three. Now simply grabbing some white, probably a lot more white and just gingerly adding some of that into it. Dry your work if you need to. And then we want to simply do this. I'm going to bring this in front of that section now. I'm trying to make it a 3D looking, but I don't want it just all round blobs everywhere. I want to try and capture the vibe of the maple, which is kind of skewed everywhere and then getting a big bit in front. If this is your first time watching my channel, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. Give me a comment, tell me what you reckon, tell me how you found my channel, tell me what you think. I'm getting some... There we go. I do want to put some little bits that might have dropped on the ground. I'm just grabbing a small flat, a small flat or a small filbert would do. Get some grey. You want it kind of not too loaded in your brush, not too much loaded. Because we've got light over there, so what else? I'll just see how this is going to look. We'll see if we can get some kind of shadow from them coming through the grass there if that's going to make any sense and realism within our painting. Shadows are always forgotten, aren't they? Let's see if this can have a shadow coming all the way off there. Just reference it in, it doesn't have to be perfect. Another one there. Get a bit more there. Let's see what this is doing. I'll just sign this and then we'll whack a frame on it. See how she looks. And I want to take this opportunity just to thank the people that support my content through Patreon or even becoming a member in my YouTube channel here. If you want to become a member, hit the join tab below if you're watching on a desktop. Check out my art group, Facebook art group. It's called Ianapolis Art Network. All the links are in the description below. Traceable links relevant to my tutorials. Everything's down there. Have a look. Okay, how does that look? Yeah, there we go. That's not too shabby, is it? We've got a beautiful evening sun setting, or in the morning, in the morning, the dawn setting on the Japanese Mongolias there. Thank you very much, Jan Davis. And with a bit of practice, if you're not too familiar how to do it, you make sure you put your practice in your work and you can do it.
Well, I had a lot of fun doing that. I hope you learnt something along the way. Once again, thank you to Jan Davis. Be sure to tell your friends if you like what I'm doing, but if you don't, you tell everybody. Check out this other video of mine here. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.